comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. Whether it be the length of a YouTube video, the heat of a McDonald's apple pie, or how long a specific part of your body may be, everything can be measured. However, we don't have just one unit of measurement for everything in life. Like, you can't check the time in centimeters or figure out your shoe size in kilograms. There are all different kinds of measurements. Some have wider use than others. For example, the height of most things can be figured out using centimeters, the weight in kilograms, and one of the few units of measurement everyone seems to agree upon across the globe is how we measure time with seconds minutes and hours sorry swatch your dot beat time scale never really caught on however there are some much niche measurements out there that are only really used to measure one specific thing one of my favorites being tog togs are used to measure the thickness of a duvet i only know this from my days working at a supermarket and restocking the darn things it's a really fun word and it's thought to ultimately come from the togas of antiquity this means they are not named after a real person and that's what this video is actually all about. There are many units of measurement that are indeed named after real people, whether that be because they invented the unit or it was named in ode of them. Like with the other measurements we discussed, some of these are pretty well known of, while some are really weird. Like there's a whole list of humorous measurements I found on Wikipedia, with many deriving from real people. Even Wiki thinks they're funny. So today, let's reveal some units of measurement, from the well known to the outright weird, that are named after real people. Perhaps Perhaps the most well known of these measurements named after a real person is a Newton. Newtons are used to measure the force behind something. Anyone else play around with those weird Newton measuring stick things during psych classes as a kid or was that just me? This measurement is of course named after Sir Isaac Newton. While he didn't invent the concept of force or gravity, it was he who was the first one to actually think about why these sorts of things happened. Famously why an apple falls from a tree at the same rate at all times. So when forces became fully measurable, the unit used to measure force was named in his honor. In regards to where Newton as a last name comes from, well it's pretty obvious if you think about it. It simply means new town. To this day, you will still find places called Newton. First one that comes to mind for me is Newton Abbott, the town in Devon. Hertz are a unit of measurement you may have heard of before. Hertz seem to have various applications, but are most well known for being used to measure frequency. Hertz is now a word we link so much with the world of technology and has a suitably techno sound to it. However, it ultimately the surname of one Heinrich Hertz. He was the one who studied this subject matter and helped form this measurement, so it makes sense as to why it's named after him. This as a last name simply means heart. Hertz can relate to sound too, but perhaps the measurement most linked with sound is decibels. Decibels are actually part of a larger measurement called bells, with a decibel being a tenth of a bell, hence the deci part at the start. The bell part however comes from the last name of Alexander Graham Bell, the man who is most often credited with inventing the telephone. Phones are all about sound, so it makes sense to name it after him. Though it's incredibly fitting that the measurement used to measure sound is named after someone with the last name of Bell, which are known for being quite loud. It's something of an aptronym, I suppose. Many measurements in the world of electricity are named after people too. This makes sense as the ability to use electric for power is very much a human thing, so it makes sense to name these measurements after the people who made progress in their field. The most noticeable electrical measurements named after people are what's volts and ohms. Watt relates to the consumption of electricity a device may use, and its name comes from James Watt, an inventor and engineer. Watt as a surname is thought to be Scottish, and this makes sense as James Watt was a Scotsman himself. Watt as a surname is thought to derive from the personal name of Walter. Walter as a first name means army commander, which is pretty cool. So perhaps somewhere down the line, someone received Walter as a last name in honor of a family member, and then it got shortened to just Watt. Volt and Watts often get confused, and truth be told, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is myself. From what I can gather, a volt relates more to the electrical potential of something. What I can tell you more about is that name. Volt is like Hertz, where it's a word that's become deeply linked with technology. It's strange to think that it simply comes from the physicist Alessandro Volta. His last name was initially changed into the adjective of voltaic, relating to electric potential, and it was then this adjective that became the noun of Volt. As a last name, Volta is thought to come from the Italian Volte, meaning fox. Ohms finally relates to electrical resistance, and they're named after physicist George Ohm. We aren't too sure where this name comes from, but one idea is that it comes from an old word for uncle, Ohm. 
This is the part of the video where I complain about how dumb Fahrenheit is. Like I know my country uses a mix of metric and imperial, but come on now, Fahrenheit is ridiculous. Like how could you not have zero as your freezing point? This measurement for temperature is used in nations including the USA, the Bahamas, and Belize to name a few. Its name is of German origins however, being named after its creator Gabriel Fahrenheit. He proposed this scale in 1714, and its zero is just as silly as I suggested it is. Apparently he bases zero on the lowest temperature observed one day in winter. Like I said, the whole thing is very silly. As a last name, Fahrenheit apparently means experience, which is an incredibly unique meaning for a last name, I have to admit. The far more sensible unit of measurement for temperature, Celsius, is also named after someone, the astronomer Anders Celsius. Another temperature-centric measurement named after someone is the Kelvin. From what I can gather, Kelvins are pretty similar to Celsius's, and it's named after William Thomas. Okay, so while he was wasn't exactly called Kelvin, he was the Lord Kelvin. Yeah, as well as an engineer, he was a fancy Lord man too. He received his title because he was a professor at the University of Glasgow, and the river that flowed past his university is the River Kelvin. So yeah, the measurement is named after a dude's title, with this dude's title coming from a river. Kelvin's a part of something called the Joule Kelvin effect, with a joule being another measurement that relates to various things including electricity, heat, and force. Its name comes from James Prescott Joule, though another measurement that relates to heat is the Scoville. Scoville relates specifically to the heat of a pepper, with the hottest apparently being the Carolina Reaper, being 2.2 million Scoville. This measurement was created by one Wilbur L. Scoville, who named it after himself. It's a really fitting name for a heat measurement system. System, as it sounds somewhat like scolding. It seems to come from a village in Normandy. It's lucky that many of these people who invented these scales have such unique last names, isn't it, I suppose? Like, imagine if he was called Wilbur L. Smith and it was just called the Smith Scale. I mean, no offense to anyone named Smith, but you get the idea. Then we arrive at some of the more strange measurements named after people, like the Garn Scale. This is the scale NASA uses to measure at what force their astronauts get sick and throw up. This scale is named after Jake Garn, someone who was well renowned for their violent sickness while on board rockets. Another really strange and silly one is a Helen. This relates to Helen of Troy, and it revolves around the amount of beauty it would take to launch a ship. This derives from the belief that Helen of Troy's beauty could launch a thousand ships, so a Millie Helen could launch just one ship. How real this measurement is and the specific principle behind it, I'm not too sure, but it's very silly to say the least. A Warhol is a measurement named after artist Andy Warhol, and is used to measure the time of being famous. It relates to his quote, about everyone having 15 minutes of fame. This means that one Warhol constitutes 15 minutes, two Warhols half an hour, and so on. As a very mindly, vaguely successful YouTuber, I have no idea how many Warhols of fame I've had, I must admit. I've been recognized twice very quickly in public, so maybe a third of a Warhol or something. Warhol is actually a Ukrainian surname, initially being Warhola, meaning quarrel. Another strange one relates to actor Will Wheaton. He was one of the first celebrities to embrace Twitter and quickly amassed 500,000 followers. This amount of Twitter followers was dubbed a Wheaton, meaning if you have 1 million followers, you have 2 Wheatons of followers. Wu himself now has well over a Wheaton of followers. Good for him. The surname itself is thought to come from Anglo-Saxon roots, relating to the village of Wheaton Aston. And finally, while this one isn't named after a real person, I couldn't not mention the Mickey. Mickeys are a measurement that relate to the distance a computer mouse moves on screen, with one Mickey being around 1 at 200th of an inch. Likewise, the sensitivity of a mouse is recorded in Mickeys per inch. As this relates to computer mice, I'm sure you have a clear idea as to what Mickey exactly this measurement relates to. Like I said, while not entirely a real person, Mickey Mouse is perhaps the most well-known person in this video. But that's just about all the ones I wanted to share with you today. Though I just remembered the Richter scale for earthquakes named after Charles Francis Richter, so I'll mention it here to cover my grounds. If there's any others I've forgotten, let me know. But all this really got me thinking, what would my own name be used as a measurement for? Or rather, what could name explain be a measurement for? I personally think that one name explain would equal about 10 minutes. That's because that's the usual length of time I try and stretch these videos out for so I can fill them with annoying ads. I mean, I know it's 8 minutes now, but old habits die hard. I mean, I'm literally writing this sentence just to stretch out a tad more. Let me know what you think a name explain could be a measurement for. And and of course, what do you think your very own name could be a measurement for as well? Let me know down below. 
This video topic was suggested by Steven Nikolov over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a Name Explain video and wish to enjoy Name Explain videos ad-free, as well as get exclusive content, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos. $2 a month gets you all that, plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.